Okay, in this mini tutorial, we're going to look at some of the superficial features of the brain. Okay, so we're going to look at mainly the cerebral hemispheres and think about some superficial features. Uh, we've got a, a lateral view of the cerebral hemisphere here. So this is the left cerebral hemisphere. We're going to look at a superior view. We're going to look at an inferior view. And we're going to look at a sagittal section. Okay, so let's start off by taking a look at this lateral view of the left cerebral hemisphere. And the first obvious things I want to point out to you, um, here is of course the grey matter of the cerebral cortex and as you know this is very well developed in humans. We have huge cerebral hemispheres um, compared to the size of our bodies and this is what explains our exceptional cognitive abilities in the animal kingdom. Um, around the back of the brain here we have the cerebellum, a phylogenetically much older structure but still very well represented in the human brain and we can just about here see uh, the brain stem uh, which we're going to look at in more detail in the sagittal section. So they're the main basic parts of um, a lateral view of the brain. Now the first important landmark I'd like you to identify, be able to identify, is this groove here, okay? So this um, is a sulcus, okay? So the sulci are the spaces in between the adjacent gyri, which are the raised areas. So this is a large sulcus running in the coronal plane, and this is called the central sulcus, okay? So what we have here is the central sulcus. And the central sulcus is really, really important as a landmark in the brain because it tells us where the primary motor and sensory cortices can be found. Okay, So the primary motor cortex, where our motor homunculus resides, can be found here in the precentral gyrus anterior to the central sulcus. The primary Somatosensory cortex can be found here in the post-central gyrus behind the central sulcus. So the central sulcus is a crucial landmark to orientate ourselves in the brain. Another thing that it helps with is it helps to demarcate the boundary between the frontal lobe and the parietal lobe. Okay, So the central sulcus is the boundary between the frontal lobe and the parietal lobe. Therefore, the frontal lobe contains the motor cortex and the parietal lobe contains the sensory cortex. Another important sulcus for you to identify is the lateral sulcus, um, sometimes called the sylvian fissure. And this lateral sulcus here is important because it separates the temporal lobe here uh, from the frontal and parietal lobes. Okay, so this lateral sulcus separates the temporal lobe from the frontal and parietal lobes. Another lobe that we can see is this one here around the back. This is the occipital lobe here. And the occipital lobe, uh, as you know, is involved in vision. And it sits right at the back of the brain, just over the cerebellum. So those are the main features of... Um, a lateral view of the cerebral hemisphere. And as I said, a really important landmark is the central sulcus um, for you to appreciate. Now let's take a look at a superior view of the cerebral hemisphere. So here we are, we're looking down onto the cerebral hemisphere um, from the top, and we can see a major feature here, um, which is this great longitudinal fissure, okay? So this is a longitudinal fissure separating the left and right hemispheres. And if you were to gently um, prise this apart, open up the longitudinal fissure and look down into the space, you would see the corpus callosum joining up the left and right hemispheres. Uh, what else can we see? Well, we can see here. Here is the central sulcus once more. I can tell it's the central sulcus because it runs continuously from the midline all the way down to the temporal lobe uninterrupted. Okay, so this is the central sulcus, this is our precentral gyrus, and here's our postcentral gyrus as well. Um, we can see a little bit of the cerebellum there, visible just between the two occipital lobes.
um, we can of course see the frontal lobes and the parietal lobes here. So that's our superior view of the brain. And now let's move on to the inferior view. So the, the inferior view, there's a lot going on actually. Um, starting once again at the lobes of the brain, we can see the, I'm sorry, we can see the frontal lobes here, the temporal lobes here, um, and the cerebellum, here is the cerebellum hemisphere, and the occipital lobes at the back. And remember um, how you relate this to the um, cranial fossa, the frontal lobes sit in the anterior cranial fossa, the temporal lobes sit in the middle cranial fossa, and the cerebellum and brain stem sits in the posterior cranial fossa. Um, the brain stem, we can see um, that we've got the pond, that, sorry, the midbrain, no, start again, we've got the medulla at this point, we've got the pons at this point, and we've got a very small amount of midbrain visible just about here, but, but we can't see it particularly well on this view, the midbrain is relatively buried. Um, you'll be familiar with the cranial nerves attached at the brain stem, um, and I'm not going to spend much more time in this video describing them, but there is a separate one going through the topography of the cranial nerves. What else can we see? Um, well, we can see the optic chiasm and the pituitary stalk, just there. Um, and we can also see these two little uh, mammillary bodies here, which are part of the limbic system. You don't need to know too much about them, but just know that they're there, and you can see them as two little um, outcroppings just above the midbrain. Um, a final and crucial part of the brain I want to draw your attention to, um, and I'm actually going to colour these regions in to emphasise them, um, is this region here in the uh, temporal lobe, this very medial most part of the temporal lobe here. This part of the temporal lobe um, is known as the oncus of the temporal lobe, the oncus of the temporal lobe. And it has a really important clinical significance um, because the uncus of the temporal lobe sits right next to the midbrain and very close to where the third nerves come out of the midbrain. And what that means is if intracranial pressure increases and pushes the uncus down through the tentorial notch into the posterior fossa, the uncus here can compress the midbrain um, and lead to a very typical set of signs which includes a third nerve palsy. So this so-called uncle herniation is really really important and it's important that you understand the relation between the uncus of the temporal lobe and the midbrain at this level. Sitting just lateral to the uncus in roughly this region here we have the so-called parahippocampal gyrus uh, and it is within here deep to this region that we find the hippocampus um, a structure which is really important in the formation of memories. Now let's move to the um, median sagittal section of the brain where we're going to look at some of the deeper structures um, to be found when you cut the brain into two halves down the middle. So of course we can see the uh, medial aspect of the cerebral cortex. Um, it's important for you to realise how that cerebral cortex has a hidden part to it um, at the midline, um, and this is to maximise its surface area, really. So here, once again, is our central sulcus. This is the central sulcus here, with our pre- and post-central gyri. So this is where the lower limbs are represented in the motor and sensory cortices. So we've got the frontal lobe, we've got elements of the parietal lobe, and the occipital lobe here. Um, there are a few, couple of other cortical features I want to draw your, your attention to. Um, this structure here, this part of the cortex sitting just above the um, corpus callosum, which is here, this part of cortex above the corpus callosum is called the cingulate gyrus, the cingulate gyrus. And this has some importance clinically um, because a space occupying lesion in one hemisphere can actually push the cingulate gyrus across to the other half of the head underneath the falx cerebri. So the cingulate gyrus can get damaged in herniation um, when you've got a space occupying lesion in, in, say, the left hemisphere. <laughs> 
Additionally, and when you do more detail on this, the anterior cere cerebral artery runs in this pattern as well. And if we have this herniation of the cingulate gyrus, it can lead to compression of the anterior cerebral artery. Another cortical feature is a sulcus that I want to show you, and that's this sulcus here in the occipital lobe, this sulcus here. This is the calcarine sulcus, the calcarine sulcus, and this is important because the primary visual cortex sits around the calcarine sulcus. Okay, so lesions here could lead to visual field defects um, or things like cortical blindness. So those are the major cortical structures I want to point out to you. Deeper, we've got, of course, the corpus callosum here. Um, we can just about see into one of the lateral ventricles here. But mostly, um, what we can see is that there is a thin membrane of tissue at this point, sitting just underneath the corpus callosum. And this thin membrane of tissue is called the septum pellucidum. The septum pellucidum. And this separates the two lateral ventricles. The lateral ventricles, as you know, come together at the interventricular um, coalescence, the interventricular foramen, which is roughly at this point here. And then the CSF enters the third ventricle. So the pointer is now in the cavity of the third ventricle. Uh, and you'll remember that the walls of this third ventricle laterally are made up of the thalamus. And often we have this little interthalamic adhesion sticking the two halves of the thalamus together. So here's the third ventricle. Here is the cerebral aqueduct going down and entering into the fourth ventricle, which is pyramid-shaped or triangular. This is the fourth ventricle sitting just underneath the cerebellum. Okay? So those are elements of the ventricular system that we can see um, in this sagittal section. What else can we see? Well, if this is the thalamus, this here is the hypothalamus, sitting very close to the um, pituitary stalk and the um, optic chiasm as well. Um, here is the midbrain, so this is the midbrain. This is the pons, and this is the medulla. All right. um, what else can we see? Well, in fact, very nicely, we've, we've cut the basilar artery here. You'll do more on that when we do the blood supply, but this is an important vessel for the pons. And finally, um, the little pineal gland, which sits just here. This is the pineal gland, um, very important in the regulation of the sleep-wake cycle. So those are the major structures I want to draw your attention to with regard to this sagittal section. Um, we'll just zoom out, um, and I want you to be comfortable with all these structures because that's going to help you with your understanding of how the various neuronal systems work in the brain. Okay, thank you.